Kay, Kay, you're in the shot. <laughs> Good morning, church. It is great to be with you here today. I love seeing all your smiling faces. For those of you joining us online, welcome. It is great to be here with you as well in a metaphorical sense. Um, we got a lot going on. Uh, as a church, we've got a, I've got a lot going on starting this upcoming week. And what, I wanted to just take a moment because I've looked in the outreach room and many of you signed up to bring things for our homeless ministry uh, that I'll be participating in at Mardi Gras. Uh, and I just wanted to say thank you. Steve, do you have that picture? Or Tracy? Yeah. So that picture right there is, and, and it's hard, there's no detail here because that's the mass of humanity we will be traveling through. Uh, a group of 250 to 300 men sharing the love of Christ with folks who don't know that they, they really need that, right? Um, I've talked to a few folks, and, and one of the things that, uh, that I'm anxious for is I know what to expect. I know what the possibilities are when we go to Mardi Gras, and uh, I'm excited to do homeless ministry. I'm excited to be involved in the spiritual warfare that will take place there. Um, and so... That's where I will be, well, I'll get there Thursday night, but that doesn't happen right away, but that's what I will be encountering, especially Monday and Tuesday, when you guys are getting ready for church on Sunday, this is the stuff that I will be in the middle of. So, one of the things, uh, and Zach's going to share it, is I'm going to covet your prayers, uh, because uh, there's a sense of danger, uh, but it's a good danger you're doing the stuff of Jesus. So, I'm excited to worship with you guys today. Somebody's dropped a note here. Uh, it's all, oh, am I doing announcements? Oh, okay. So, you think, you know, as the pastor, you... Okay, yeah, you think as a pastor I know what I'm doing? <laughs> yeah, right, no, it's all good. Um, so, that said... Let's just go ahead and worship. Let's just get this off of me. Let's put it on the praise team. I'm going to invite you to stand as you are able and let's worship together. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory. Salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. 
is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. Good morning. All right. We've got a new one for you. It's called Gracefully Broken. So just think about that. We've all got our past and our, you know, our sins we've asked Jesus to forgive us for, which he has. And some of us still may sometimes feel broken, but think of yourselves as gracefully broken, covered by Jesus in your, in your brokenness, right? Mm -hmm. So just, we hope you like this one. We'll probably bring it out again, but just sing along if you know it, okay? And, and, and it's very repetitive, mm -hmm. so even if you don't know it, probably by halfway through the song, you'll be able to catch on. God, all that I am and find my heart on the altar again. Set me on fire, set me on fire. Take all I have in these hands and multiply. God, all that I am and find my heart on the altar again set me on fire set me on fire here i am god arms wide open pouring out my life gracefully Take me, you will be with me. Here I am, God, arms wide open, pouring out my life, gracefully broken. Here I now holding nothing back holding nothing back I surrender I surrender You guys did great. That was great. All right. Good morning.
Good morning. We welcome you here. It's great. Oh, so full today. I love it. Your smiling faces. We welcome you here in the sanctuary or out online. Um, um, birthdays just yet. We'll do them maybe next week. Okay. All right. Take a moment and greet each other in the love of Christ. Let's try to find our seats, guys. Let's try to find our seats, guys. Hello? Good morning. I am Sad Daily, and these are your announcements. Next Sunday, Scott Hikins will be preaching the word to us. Ash Wednesday service will be at 6 p.m. next Wednesday, and we'll leave at Pastor Howard. Ashes will be provided. Please pray for Pastor C in the NGL May and at Mardi Gras. Enjoy worship. Like an announcement heavy service. Normally I don't like to do a lot of announcements. Um, one of the things that we're going to be doing as we head into Easter, you guys have heard me talk about doing an all church book study. We're going to kick that off like this week. Um, your book leaders, your, your, your group leaders have already, I think, received, everybody should have received their leaders' books. And then what I'm going to invite you to do every household, uh, meaning if you're a two-person household, get one book. I've got books over here. These are the books you're going to be going through with your leaders. Uh, what, we're, what we're looking at doing is we're getting our church used to inviting people to church, right? One of the great fears that many Christians have is going up to a person in person, looking them in the eye and say, I'd like to invite you to come to church with me. Right? I think we'd rather walk across hot coals than invite somebody to church. Um, what this is going to do, this book was written by uh, Reverend Shane Bishop, and a lot of churches I know have gone through this, and they said it's an outstanding way to get the laity comfortable with inviting folks to church. And what we're going to do, the, the goal is to finish all of this by March 5th, it's a couple weeks before Easter, and then just heavily invite everybody we can. I mean, if you see a stranger on the side of the street, you walk up to him and invite him to church. Invite, invite, invite. And what we're going to measure success by is not how many people come to church. 
Let that sink in for just a second. But what is the goal of this book study? To get you comfortable inviting. So we're going to measure success by how many people we invite to church. Right? Because if you invite one person to church, statistically, they're not going to come to church. Right? But if you invite 25 people to church, statistically, one person is going to come to church. So we're going to invite, invite, invite. Uh, so that kicks off. You, you're going to have to talk to your group leaders. Group leaders, I think you're all here, actually. Um, take a look at your groups. Contact them. Let them know when you're going to be starting your studies. Uh, and then I'm going to put a word out for mine as well. Uh, and then for those of you who are not group leaders, make sure you grab a book off the front pew over here after service. Um, and then I also want to, to say that thank you, because I've been approached, uh, I put a challenge out there for us to support children going to church in the slums of Nairobi, going to school in the slums of Nairobi, Kenya. A friend of mine uh, had reached out, and they have 230 children going to their school. And the way we break the cycle of poverty, many of you probably know, is through education. Right? If we don't educate our young, then we will not break that cycle of poverty. And that is what we're going to lean into. And I've already had a couple of families reach out to me that they want to support 10. The goal was to support 10. We have already gotten 20 right now spoken for, 20 children that this church is going to send. Yeah. Now, that's two families. Now, what I'd like to do is hear from the rest of you. And, and whatever we can do more than the 20, uh, I, I'm just going to thank God for that and thank you for listening to, to God pinging your heart. Um, so that's, uh, I'm hoping to wrap that up today so we can send them money this upcoming week. So if you have wanted to give to that uh, and haven't yet, please put something in or at least let us know that, let Lauren know tomorrow that you're planning on bringing something in. Sometime during the week, we're going to send uh, money for that. And again, thank you. Um, you guys saw the video or saw the pictures last week. Uh, and every one of the pictures I've seen of the children that were in school. And remember, these are the kids that are in the poorest of the poorest of the poor areas there in Kenya. Uh, and without uniforms, without uh, the money to buy books and all those things, they don't go to school. They just don't go to school. And uh, on top of that, they get to learn about Jesus and they get food. Many of these children don't eat three squares or four or five squares like our children here, right? Some of these kids may go a full day with maybe having a meal. And you're putting food in their bellies, you're putting Jesus in their hearts, and you're putting education in their brains, right? So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, that's what I've got. Sorry, I wanted to add those few things. Susan, it's all yours. <laughs> wow, you're running up. <laughs> okay, I have a question for you this morning. Do you ever need help? Is that mic on? Is that the blue one? I didn't have the green one this morning. Uh, yeah, I didn't, the green, I, anyway, I didn't find it. There we go. Okay, there we go. Try to use my teacher voice, but then it doesn't go across the broadcast. Um, so, this morning, do you ever need help with something? What do you need help with, Evan? Sometimes math equations. Oh, yeah, I sometimes need help with math. Anybody else? What do you need help with, Colton? Nothing. <laughs> Whoa! I love it. You don't need help with anything, not even to tie shoes? Uh, you've got Velcro. <laughs> or not Velcro, but the elastic. Luca, do you need help with something? What? Video games. Yeah, it does take some skill. You got to practice and, you know, you just work your way up with video games. 
Video games, my dad helps me. <laughs> you do need help with something. All right, well, you know, when I cook, sometimes I have to have help, you know, recipe books. They're just, they're there, they help you. Some people can cook without them, I know, because they're just natural cooks. And then, you know, sometimes when I'm traveling, Miss Eve over here has a road map. You know you need that. But are these all reliable? Think about it. And then think about where a lot of us look for help. The internet, right? <laughs> Everybody says, oh, I Googled that. Well, do you think every time you get advice or help on the internet that it's correct? No. No, you're right. It's not always correct, right? Sometimes even those YouTube videos that show you how to fix something aren't right, you know? They're just, it's just not reliable. But I have something that is reliable every day, every moment. What do you think it is that's reliable all the time? What is it, Evan? Uh, God and Jesus. God and Jesus. Yes, it yep. is. So I'm going to share with you. Actually, Gary gave, Pastor Gary gave me this idea to use the scripture. It's Psalm 121, verses 1 through 8. It says, this is what the Lord it comes from the Bible. I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Remember what I said, every day, every moment. Indeed, he watches over Israel, will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. Remember that, he's with you every second. He doesn't sleep. He doesn't rest. He doesn't need it. So. The Lord will keep you from all harm, and he will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore, for the rest of your lives. Think about that. God is reliable, and he's there to help, right? Let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask for his help. Ready? Can you bow your heads? Eva, can you bow your head? Dear Lord, I ask that you be with his children, that when they ask for help or need help, you know what they need. Just be there for them. Help them guide them and just protect them. We just ask this all in your name. Amen. what I found on Google, and it made my insides just kind of clinch up, uh, because, you know, if we believed everything on the internet, then what I, if I told you that I was a French model, you guys remember that commercial, right? You know that's not the truth. <laughs> it is, uh, it's, a, it's a crazy reminder, oddly enough, that the only truth we have is right here. This is the only truth we have. Uh, and, and to that, if you guys ever hear me talk about, preach about, whatever, anything involving God's Word, and it just doesn't, something doesn't sound right, something sounds off, you're just really not sure about what I'm saying, come talk to me. I'm not going to tell you that I found it on the internet or, or even that this is theology according to Steve. We're going to open up the Bible and we're going to find it together, right? We're going to, I'm going to show you where my source comes from. Uh, and I don't ever want you to just take everything that I say for, at, at face value. Come challenge me. Come talk to me. Because not, I love nothing more than teaching and spending time in the Word. It was March 29, 2008. 
Kay and I were celebrating our honeymoon with about 75 of our closest friends. 75, Kay? He's about 75 of our closest friends. We were on a trip of a lifetime, or so I thought. Not only because it was my honeymoon with Kay, but because I truly felt God stirring in my heart. You see, less than a month before, I had lost my job unexpectedly. And while someone with half a brain would have postponed such a trip due to the loss of income, God was telling us to go. Just go. And since it's apparent that I did have just half a brain, we went. This is a picture of Mount Nebo. This is the area, this is the the space that as you look out in this picture, you see the promised land. This is where Moses was shown by God the promised area for his people. And it was our second day on the trip and we found ourselves there. My friends, sometimes you just have to do what you have to do. Now the problem I used to have, and it's a problem many have, is that I tried to outthink God. In the midst of this turmoil in our lives, in the midst of this lost income, in the midst of whatever that meant to our family, in the midst of all of that, I tried my best to outthink God. Going back from that point a little bit in time, I I was part of a small group, a small group of men, and we studied scripture together. And uh, our group leader, his name is Craig LaCroix. I'm actually driving to Mardi Gras with him on Thursday morning. Craig was the best man at our wedding and a mighty man of God. Craig had a small group of men, and we met every week. And one night, he asked the question, what do you feel God is leading you to? What do you think God's long-term plans are for you? And so we, each of the guys in the group kind of thought about it for a minute and started sharing their thoughts. And when it came around to me, I'd never thought of that. How many of you have ever thought, what has God planned for me? What's God's plans for my life for the next 20 years? Right? Nobody does that. And when it came to me, I just kind of blurted out, well, it feels like God is leading me into ordained ministry. And as we went and continued to talk, every one of the men in that group affirmed what I felt in my heart, that God was leading me to this. That night, when I got home and felt pretty good about the meeting, it was a great meeting, and uh, went to bed, and then sometime in the middle of the night, about 2 o'clock in the morning, I had the most horrific nightmare I'd ever had in my entire life. It was a knockdown, down drag-out furniture smashing fight with Satan. There was no doubt in my mind who I was fighting against. And when I woke up from that nightmare, I was drenched in sweat and I walked through our house and I prayed through the rooms because I felt the very real spiritual attack that had just taken place. Fast forwarding a few months, it's probably six months later, Craig asked the same question. Has anything changed? Where do you think God is calling you to long term? And I shared the same thing. I, I, it had not been on my mind since that night we had talked about it. And I shared, you know what, I still think the same thing. I still think that God is leading me into ordained ministry. And again, all the men, including the two new ones we had, affirmed that. 
The next morning, I got a call from my boss who told me I'd just been let go from my job. Unexpectedly. Now, here's the rub. God had been speaking to me. He sent me visions. He rattled my cage on more than one occasion. And one day, standing on top of Mount Nebo, God unveiled his vision for me. Kay took that picture. And and, and I'll be honest with you, when I stood up there and looked across into the promised land, into Israel, I lost all track of time. I lost all track of time because God took a hold of me. It's almost, you guys remember the story when, when Paul was on the way to persecute the Jews and, and he was surrounded by this cloud and nobody knew what was going on inside there and Jesus spoke with him. It was very much that kind of a moment for me. I lost track of time. I saw things below, things of man disappear. Anything that was not natural just kind of faded out of my sight. When I tried to figure out what it was that God was showing me through that vision, and during the vision, by the way, God was very clear that he was showing me the same thing he had showed Moses. And that might sound a little presumptuous even to me, but it's what happened. And as I tried to figure out what it was that he was showing me, I realized what he was showing me was what my ministry was going to be about. It's going to be a simple ministry. It was going to be not the rock star pastoring of a, of a 5,000 person church where you've got smoke and you've got lights and you've got all these things. It wasn't going to be that kind of ministry. It was going to be a simple thing. He was explaining to me that I was to keep it simple. And I thought that that meant small. And so the first church uh, that I served as a full-time pastor was the Elsa United Methodist Church. And the Elsa Church, when I started there, had 18 people. We had 18 people, and within six months, we were down to 12. I'm not instilling a lot of confidence, am I? But, But here's the deal. The people that left were the people that were keeping it small. The people that left needed to go. And nobody had dealt with that before I got there. Friends, by the time I left Elsa, we had gone from 12 to 28, all based on profession of faith. These were not people that came from another church. These were all people who were new Christians. God did something with a simple message. And and that's what I thought it was. I thought, I'm just going to be serving 20-something people, churches, the rest of my life. And I was okay with that. I was okay with that because it's what God, I thought, was calling me into. Now we find ourselves here at Bethany. And I realize over the years, God's message was not that I was going to be serving small churches, but that my ministry had to be simple. It had to be the simple message of God. It had to be the simple message that Christ shared with us. That I couldn't get wrapped up in all the other stuff. And Bethany is part of an answer to prayer in many ways. But part of it is Bethany gives me the opportunity to do the things that God wants me to do. You see, if I was a bivocational pastor... If I was working a job and then coming here on Sundays and preaching, I wouldn't get to do the things that God has put in front of me. Some of the things that I've been able to do is go out on the streets and 
serve the homeless. I've been able to meet with people during the day and spend time talking about Jesus. I shared this story where a congregant of mine called and said, hey, there's this homeless person out on the, on the, the side of the road, and I went and talked to him. I realize now that I'm to keep my message simple, but that even in simplicity, our prayers get answered. Our scripture reading today comes, we're going to Old Testament today, comes from 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10. I'm going to invite you to stand as you are able for the reading of God's holy word. And I'm going to set the stage here with the previous verse because this is, a, this is about the descendants of Judah. It's that, that lineage, right? When we get to in the Bible that how many of us hit that lineage and we skip forward, we press the fast forward button to get past it. And, and I have to ask the question, and I will during our pastor's Bible study that we're going to be starting in the not too distant future. If it wasn't important for us to know, why would God have it here? Right? And so in the fourth chapter, it talks about the descendants of Judah. And in the ninth verse of the fourth chapter, it says, Jabez was honored more than his brothers, and his mother named him Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in pain. And now we come to our reading today. In the tenth verse, Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my border and that your hand might be with me and that you would keep me from hurt and harm. And God granted what he asked. This is the word of God for the people of God. Please be seated. This prayer, the prayer of Jabez, doesn't get a lot of work in church. Why? Because it doesn't have the apparent heft, if you will, of something like the Lord's Prayer that we've already studied. Oddly enough, there was a book written in 2000 called The Prayer of Jabez. Anyone here ever read it? It was a New York Times bestseller. I think it sold... 10 million or more copies, I actually had the note. 10 million or more copies was sold of this book. Some evangelical preachers have reached deeply into this prayer, claiming that the reason why we don't achieve what we seek is because we don't pray bold prayers like this one. Blech. Yeah, you heard me. And some of my dear friends who are evangelical pastors have preached on this, and I still say, bleh. There are four things <coughs> we'll have covered by the end of today that will help us realize what we can do, what we are called to do to ignite the Holy Spirit. First, we spent time with the Lord's Prayer, you know, going back a few weeks. We spent time with the Lord's Prayer. And in that model for prayer, <coughs> we are taught to recognize God for who He is. Jesus teaches us our proper place below God. Teaches us to rely on God for our provisions and reminds us that we are called on to forgive others. <coughs> This model reminds us of our place in God's kingdom and reminds us of our reliance on God for all that we have. It's all about relationship. Relationship. We then talked about our service to others and what we must, that we must love our neighbor as ourselves. Last week, our focus was on giving, sharing the blessings God has imparted with, 
imparted us with as a means of recognizing where our blessings come from, as well as keeping our eyes and hearts focused on the kingdom. In other words, we have to seek God, show mercy to our neighbors, and share our blessings. This is all about relationship, my friends. It's all about relationship. And when we get the relationship we have with God and neighbor squared away, things look a lot more like your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When we figure out our relationship with God and with neighbor, when we get all that figured out, we get to a place where we see the world as God sees it. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that brings us to today. Honestly, at first sight, doesn't this prayer sound like God bless my lottery ticket and make it a winner so I can buy a bigger house? Protect me from the people who will try to steal from me and keep me healthy. It's kind of what the the prayer of Jabez sounds like if you don't understand its underpinnings. It sounds very self-serving. So you might be asking, then why are we spending time on it today as the last sermon in this series on igniting the Holy Spirit? Let's take a look at this prayer as it relates to us today by using our life points where Scripture and our everyday lives intersect. Life point number one. Cry out to God for blessing. How many of us, when we encounter trials in our lives, pray to God? Right? I hope all your hands go up on that one, right? How many, when somebody else is sick or hurt or or suffering trials? How many of us pray for them? How often do we pray for God's blessings in our own lives? Not as many hands. Not as many hands. We have got to cry out to God for His blessings. We generally don't ask God to bless us because, quite frankly, it sounds very self-serving. You'll notice that Jabez, who is honored, upright, and held in good esteem, isn't afraid to ask God for stuff. He isn't afraid to ask God for stuff. The question is, what is the motivation for asking God for stuff? What was Jabez's motivation? What should our motivation be. I believe we think too little of God to ask Him for blessings, to show us the stuff that He has planned for us, to shower us with that stuff. But we have to ask with heart that is focused on God's work. We have got to focus our prayers when we ask on what is your will, God? If we're asking for stuff just to have more stuff, that's not good. If we're asking God to bless our lottery ticket, and believe it or not, I have had somebody come up to me and ask me to bless their lottery ticket, adding the caveat that they would tithe their winnings to the church. It didn't work. It might have been that my heart really wasn't in that prayer or the fact that I didn't even pray the prayer. Uh, I would have liked to have had that tithe come in, mind you. So if any of you guys win the lottery, remember what we're commanded to do. We have got to ask God for the stuff we're asking for with a heart that's focused on God's work. 
If we share our blessings with others, that's when God will do something with that and hear our prayer. So pray. Pray for God to enlarge your border and the church's border. Not necessarily in terms of stuff, but maybe in terms of influence. Lord, give us more opportunities to reach into our neighborhoods. Columbia, Waterloo, Millstadt, Dupo. And help us to make disciples in your name. Help us to feed the hungry and serve those in need. I think when churches start getting introspective, they start looking at what's going on in the church, everybody bemoans numbers. Butts in the pew, right? Everybody says we should pray for more people to be in church. My prayer is that the people that are in church are growing in their discipleship with Jesus Christ. I never pray for numbers. I just don't. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's just not where I'm at. I pray for all of you that you will engage more deeply in your study of Scripture, that you grow more strongly in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Because for me, that's the win. That's what we are here for. Life point number two. Don't rely on your own strength, but on God's. Your right hand be with me. Jabez recognized in this prayer, when he said, your right hand be with me, he's praying for God and God's hand. And Jabez recognized, as we must, that God's work can only be accomplished with God's power. My question to all of us, when we dream dreams for our church, are we, or even in our families, are we dreaming dreams that are so big that only God can see them through? Are we dreaming things that are so small that a small group in the church can do them and then we don't give any credit to God? Friends, we have got to dream bigger dreams. We have got to understand that God, as the creator of the universe, is capable of giving us the things that we pray for. But we've got to pray boldly. We've got to pray big dreams and big prayers that only God can answer. When we get those marching orders from God and we pray for His help accomplishing them, we ignite Holy Spirit power. Our youth group just started last Sunday. We had three students. They're all here today. Three students. Did you guys have fun? All right? We're going to have fun tonight, and we're going to learn some stuff tonight. Does it make any earthly sense with three students in our youth group for us to spend a lot of time and energy on updating the youth room? See, our kids are saying yes, and some of you said yes. But it doesn't. I said, does it make any earthly sense? Because by the rubric of the world, if you ask anybody, if you ask a business owner who was not a Christian, if it made any sense for us to do what we're doing, for the bums to all come together... For those of you who aren't worshiping with us, the bums is not a bad term. <laughs> but for our, our group of people to come together and, and focus their energy and, and for the church to, to, to give money towards updating the room and to get, get the things that we need for the youth, from an earthly perspective, it makes no sense. Where's the return on investment, the ROI? Right? Where is that return? But when we look at it from a Christian perspective, when we look at it from a Christian-centric view, it makes a ton of sense. And I'm reminded constantly 
of the, of the scripture that says, when two or more are gathered in my name, what? There I will be also. I will be also. We had three kids in youth group last week. We may have three this week. I don't know. But you know what? Actually, we may have four. But you know what? If we have two, Jesus Christ is there with us. What I see with our previously missing youth group is an opportunity for God to do something in our midst. I see a God-sized opportunity for our church called into partnership with God and planting the seeds that the Holy Spirit will cause to grow. And that's something only God can do, my friends. We can put the invitations out there. That's what we're called to do. But only God can see the increase through the power of the Holy Spirit. Our part involves creating room. God's part is filling that room. Not our strength, but His. Life point number three. The prayers of the righteous will avail much. Jabez also prayed for protection. I spent a lot of time working with everyone who's a part of this church family. I've spent a lot of time in prayer. I've spent a lot of time in leadership meetings. I've spent a lot of time working with folks in this church. From leadership decisions to just sitting and talking about things going on in your lives, we have done this stuff together. We're doing life together. See, this isn't just about coming to church. This isn't about just having meetings. This is about us doing life together. For me, that says it all. Remember I said earlier that this whole thing that we're doing is all about relationships. And it's the relationship of this church doing life together. As Jabez recognized, when you step out in faith to accomplish the will of God, the enemy is going to come after you. Do I hear an amen there? Right? Because... You know, Satan is really good at what he does. He's been doing it for a very long time. And his only job is to create separation between us and God. That's all Satan does. That's all he does. And he's really good at it. You know how we help him? When we step back. And we say, you know what? It's okay if I miss church. It's okay if I don't tithe. It's okay if we don't support the youth of the church. I'm just going to step back a little bit. And you know what Satan has to do then to separate you from the presence of God? Nothing. Because you've done it yourself. You've done it yourself. The enemy is going to come after us though. When instead of stepping backwards, we step forward. Anybody here ever play football, like tackle football? There's a few hands up in here, right? Right? Think of yourselves as a linebacker, right? You know, you're down in your stance. You're ready. You're ready for the play. You're ready for the snap of the ball. Do you stand up like this? (laughs) Who's going to get mowed over? When you step up like this, right? You get down. You know, you might even creep up on the line of scrimmage, but you're ready for the snap of the ball. You're ready to hit the line. You're ready to make the tackle. That's got to be our stance, church. Our stance has to be this. Not stepping backwards in retreat, but stepping forward, ready to do battle. This has got to be our stance. And that's what we have to pray for. The enemy will attack when we step up in that stance. The enemy knows we're ready, but we have the Holy Spirit. We have God on our side. We must continue to pray the right way for the right reasons. And when we do this, 
praying the right way for the right reasons, we are going to see results. The final part of all this has an almost invisible conclusion. Jabez prays this prayer, God, enlarge my borders. Now, Jabez at the time was asking for a defeat of the the enemies surrounding so that the borders could be enlarged of God's people, right? Enlarge our borders, enlarge my borders, uh, protect me with your hand. We can pray the same stuff, but our prayers involve influence. Our prayers involve folks coming to church. Our prayers involve disciple making. And the final part of this verse says, and God granted what he asked. Jabez prayed for the right thing at the right time for the right reason. And God granted what he asked. Church, we've got a lot of work ahead of us, amen? We want to reach people who aren't coming to church here. We want to grow our youth group. But if we want those things so that we can count more butts in the pews, then we're missing the mark. If we want to reach adults and students and bring them into this space for the purpose of creating disciples, of reaching those who don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, and introducing them, Jesus Look who we brought. Look who we invited to church because they don't have a relationship with you. And just, can you imagine what that introduction might look like? That's something God's going to bless, my friends. My vision for the church, as I shared with you in January, involved active and intentional prayer. And it involved creating disciples for Jesus Christ. That must be our prayer. There were times when I would feel a bit of jealousy when I would be with friends who served larger churches. In fact, to this day, I still walk in and I, if I walk into a new church, I take bulletins, I take any kind of stuff that I can find so I can learn what they're doing It's just what I do. I periodically prayed for God to introduce me to a church and enlarge my borders. I thought all of that was in conflict with the vision God showed me of keeping it simple. And so I berated myself whenever I would get those thoughts. I realize that while our physical size might not be large, our hearts and desire are large. I've gotten to know you guys since August, and I love the heart of this church. God has joined us together and enlarged our borders, our influence as we continue to seek first the kingdom of God. Let's pray that prayer, my friends. Let's pray for God to enlarge our influence, to to increase our influence, to help us to be the men and women and the church that he created us to be. And as we pray that prayer, let us hope that God answers and grants what we've asked. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. (laughs) Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the words, this simple prayer that guides us in the direction that our prayers should be found. And Lord, as we pray... 
for this church, as we pray for those who do not have a relationship with you, as we pray for the things that you would have us pray for, help us in our own relationship with you. And help us as we guide others to you. We thank you and praise you in your son Jesus Christ's name. Amen. So we turn now to our time of offering. We have QR codes that Steve's going to put up. If you're worshiping with us online or you're here and you want to do it that way, that's good. There's offering plates at the back, but let us pray for God's provision. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you have made. We ask for your blessings on your tithes and our offerings. Help us to continue to be the church that you have created us to be, reaching out into our community, giving a hand up, reaching those who don't have a relationship with you and offering them that introduction. Lord, I pray your blessing on the hands that so freely and generously give this day. We pray all these things in your Son, Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. Please stand for the doxology. We're going to do a little bit different today. Y'all remember a few weeks ago when Pastor did his whole sermon on the Lord's Prayer? And he told us, okay, guys, this is why we don't say the Lord's Prayer every week. It's because it's one of those things that's ingrained in our brain. We have it memorized. So maybe while we're saying it, we're really not thinking about it. We're not thinking about what the words are. So while I like, and I think a lot of us like, the traditional things in church, it's comforting to have the Lord's Prayer, the doxology, the Apostles' Creed. Those are all very comforting to those of us who grew up saying all those things. It makes sense that we need to be thinking about the words. So he introduced us to another version of the doxology. We're going to take it in baby steps. We're not going to get rid of the original doxology. But today, we're going to be singing the tune to the original doxology to some new words, um, which I think you'll like. So that's what we're going to do today. I just wanted to explain it so you didn't want to just 
sit up here and go, what is Michelle doing? She's lost her mind. <laughs> okay, here we go. Let earth and heavenly saints proclaim the power and might of his great name. Let us exalt on bended knee. Praise God the Holy Trinity. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. As we turn now to our time of Holy Communion, and it is just that, it is a time of Holy Communion. You guys have heard me say before that I often hear we're going to take Holy Communion. Holy Communion is not something that we can take. Holy Communion is something that we can participate in, that we can receive, because it is offered by somebody far greater than us. On the night that Jesus gave himself over for us, as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, take and eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask for your blessings on these elements of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. That the church, redeemed by his blood, might go into all the world proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. Table has been prepared. If you require gluten-free elements, we have those here. Just ask me for them. Come.
the body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you.
as we get ready, as we prepare to go from here today, we've got to remember that God wants to hear from us. And if we're not praying, and if we're not praying for the right things, what's the point? So I'm going to invite us to just really think about our prayer lives, to spend time praying hard for the things that matter. Let us seek first the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and this time. We thank you for the opportunity to serve you. We thank you for the opportunity to pray for others and to be your hands and feet. Lord, in the coming days, help us to to reach out to those that you would have put in front of us, those who are the downtrodden, the hungry, those who do not have a place to go. Help us to lean into that ordained time and to be your presence in their lives. We thank you. We praise you. In your son Jesus Christ's holy name and all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let us not, as we get ready to sing our way out of here, let's not forget to come get your copy of the book for our all church book study. Go in the peace of Christ. Y'all can stand, please. I thought you had something stuck in your throat.
You have a bad ear? You have a bad ear? 